Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. So we decided to upgrade our stove to a Primus multi-fuel stove so we can burn anything uh, that we can find, whether it be kerosene, gasoline, you name it, 100 proof vodka. If we want to, we can burn it. And we got this in Vegas and it's been great ever since. Um, the only thing is we have to clean it regularly because the burning gasoline, uh, it's a little, makes a little bit of soot. So we have to clean it every once in a while and it's pretty much our only um, use of gasoline, our only petroleum products that we use on our trip. So we're gonna show you guys how, how we cook. <laughs> So what's on the menu for tonight? We have lentil tacos. And um, we're gonna get the stove ready, get the lentils starting to cook. I'm gonna start chopping, and then we're gonna walk you through, whoops, that's something important. We're gonna walk you through everything in our kitchen while the lentils are cooking down. So first off, we gotta set up our stove. So there are quite a few steps to these multi-fuel stoves, so you'll want to check your owner's manual um, just to make sure you have them 100%. Um, we've been doing this for a little bit and we're still getting used to it. So before we do anything, we're going to clean out our stove because we haven't used it in a while. Um, I just hooked up the fuel canister but haven't pressurized it or anything. So we're gonna clean it out first just to make sure our uh, fuel jet is clear and ready to burn. We have that. Okay. So our stove came with a cleaning tool. It's just a little wire um, that you stick down in the jet to clear any blockages. And when there's wind, you have to improvise. Huge ball of flame is typical. Yes, Do this not is what fret. you want to happen. <laughs> Meanwhile, the heating coil has to heat up, and around breakfast time, we started soaking the lentils. So, rice, quinoa, lentils, but it. Yeah. Um, we usually soak those, pre soak them, because they. Um, and to take a long time to cook. So if you get the first round, it probably saves you at least five minutes of cooking. Also saves you fuel and time. This is our little cook set. So lentils are one of our go-to foods. They're really inexpensive. You can get them in bulk sections in any any store, any region. Um, it's one of those kind of universal foods. Lots of protein, lots of carbs, and very small water carbon footprint. No meat is involved. This is the little $4 Goodwill cooler that I got, and this is where we usually keep our produce. Um, and we have a dry bag where we keep ice in it. So. Um, lentil soup, you can pretty much throw in any type of, I mean, not lentil soup, we're doing lentil tacos. Um, so we got onion, we got carrot, we got some cabbage. I like purple ca cabbage the best. They didn't have any. We're getting the white stuff. Uh, and we're not Cool, so I'm gonna chop up some veggies while Sarah goes through our kitchen stuff for y'all. Um, I'm, our chopping board is also a Sea to Summit plate. Um, it's plastic so it doesn't dull your knife as much and it also has edges so everything you chop doesn't fall off your chopping board when you're out camping. Yeah. Um, and I'm using our Camillus Carbonite tit Titanium Blade. Uh, this thing does it all and um, it's not serrated, it's all straight edge. So um, we eat peanut butter with this and chop veggies and cut ropes and do everything. So it's awesome. And I found it. <laughs> it makes it even more awesome. Right. So, whoa. Okay, I got this. <laughs> um, this little mesh bag is pretty much our pantry and utensil holder if we were to have an actual kitchen. Um, it's got both Patrick and I's utensil. So he's got a big old long Sea to Summit spoon. 
and I have a No Limit Spork with a can, over, can opener at the end. Um, and then we've got coconut oil. That's usually our cooking oil of choice. Um, we refill it at, like host house or um, yeah, host house is pretty much where we refill it. <laughs> no need to buy a huge thing. Um, and then y'all seen our spice rack um, from the gear video. It is a repurposed um, seven day medicine bottle. Um, and so we've got salt, pepper, garlic salt, paprika, chili, ginger, cinnamon, and it actually kept breaking at the middle joint, so we no longer keep paprika. Um, we just keep it into two separate jars now. Um, but it works really great, and it helps kind of spice up things. So tonight for dinner, we'll probably put a little of the garlic salt and maybe chili powder in our tacos. Um, and then we've got a little scraper for your pots and pans. Um, this is a big thing of garlic salt that our host gave us. Um, this is some electrolyte. This is Patrick electrolyte. And now I'm like balancing all of these things. I don't know why I'm doing this. Uh, Here. I don't want to put it down in this dirt. Okay. And then lighter. We've got multiple lighters stashed in different places. We always have one in the kitchen bag. And then we have our can opener. It's like a two cent can opener. It's super effective, super lightweight, very sharp. Love this thing. All right. So those are all the things that live in the kitchen bag. And we also keep our cups in there. We each have our own cups. We've got these off backcountry.com. They have little silicone inserts and they're titanium, so they could double as two cups um, or just the one. Uh, these things are awesome. And we usually put like the coconut oil in one and our caffeine pills in the other. Ta-da. This is kind of one of our spices bag. A lot of times we'll put like oatmeal in here. Um, we've got some of our nutritional yeast, which we will be adding to our um, tacos tonight. This is a super awesome new um, source of nutrition. It's got some protein. Um, it's got a lot of the probiotic kind of good bacteria, um, and it adds a buttery, saucy kind of taste. It's vegan too. We're not vegan, but we mostly eat vegetarian and vegan because um, it's good for you. It's less expensive and it's better for this world. All the processed stuff in the meat is really taxing on the water and the environment. So stick with that. We haven't made a full leap, leap to vegan yet though. And this is kind of just various things. We've got some spirulina powder in here. Um, this is like a immune booster, so if one of us is starting to feel a little sick, we usually do a little bit of that. We've got some tea bags and lemon juice and coffee filters um, in case we need to strain anything. That's not necessarily for coffee, but just for anything you might need to strain. Um, yeah. Honey packets. something that fluctuates depending on what we have um, and any, if we like re-up on oatmeal and it's really heavy then we might put one or two days worth of supplies in here so it's easy access but then the rest of it we'll put in a rear paneer so it's kind of tucked away and we'll get to it when we need to refill this um, so all of these items I'm going through right now fit in Patrick's front paneer and we will go through the packing back of that after we get to eat dinner. All right, so um, the only other thing that goes in there um, that's left is the plate that he's cutting on that he explained earlier. And then this pot and pan setup is a stainless steel Coleman setup, collapsible handles, really convenient, easy to use, easy to clean, easy to cook with, love them. Um, and then these collapsible Sea to Summit bowls go inside of that when it's all said and done. Um, and so we can kind of collapse these when we need to eat them, use them like a plate. Um, so one of the many reasons that we changed stoves was for fuel efficiency. We had the um, 
Pocket rocket? Yep. MSR's pocket rocket, which is really nice if you're like backpacking for a weekend or whatever, but when you're out here doing this long term, it becomes really expensive to find those canisters. And also, it's just not very efficient. It takes a lot more fuel and a lot more materials. So we have to buy a new metal canister every month or so. Um, and this way, we're refilling it with gasoline, not my favorite product to use, but we're not using AC or cars or anything else. So we'll use a little gasoline cook. Um, and this, like you said, kind of burns a little sooty, um, but you can use cleaner burning things like white gas. Um, and that's more expensive too and harder to find. Yeah. So we like this one. Hopefully the last thing in the kitchen bag. This is our, um, I think it's REI brand. Like it's a little microfiber cleaning towel. Um, and we use this to clean all of our stuff. And then we can easily clip it on to our bag while we're riding during the day. And it dries out super fast. Unless it's raining, then it will never dry out. for toppers, fresh green toppers. Okay, dokay. Ooh. Yummy tacos. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty typical to back up kitchen and camp in the dark after we eat, so you're gonna taste the reality right now. <laughs> so how much water do you think we use, Sarah? <laughs> I was gonna say about a half a cup, four ounces. Sounds about right. <laughs> ka <-ching. laughs> Clean as a whistle. Whatever that means. <laughs> people, I haven't figured that out. People spit and whistle. Take everything out and show you guys exactly how we load this. First, <laughs> big stuff. So the plate, 
Oops. <laughs> the plate and the pot. Still not clean. <laughs> Go in here. I kind of put it, can you point your light this way? Uh, I kind of point it, put the plate facing out, and the bowl on top, and then put the gas can on its side. And then I just start cramming shit. Just to kind of keep the noise from rattling around. Pantry bag. And then our stove. And then this usually gets hung on the side of the bike until it's dry, but I'm gonna put it in there for now. And that's the kitchen bag. Yay! I usually keep my knife quick draw just in case I need it for somebody or something. And there you have it. it all fits in there nice. And that's the dinner routine. Dun, da -da -da!